AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. Here are today's top headlines. GM fails to bring bondholders on board. It's also going to take back five Delphi plants. And Opal learns today who its new owner will be. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Wednesday, May 27, 2009, and now the news. GM was not able to get enough bondholders to agree to swap their bonds for stock. The U.S. Treasury had told GM that if it could get 90% of debt holders to agree to that swap, it would not force the company into bankruptcy. But we know that many bondholders bought insurance on their bonds and would get all of their investment back if GM went into bankruptcy, and so that looks like exactly what's going to happen. Meanwhile, the AP reports that the UAW will now only get 17.5% of GM's common stock, down from the 30% it was originally supposed to get. But sure sounds like there was a lot of horse trading going on. The union will get a warrant that could give it another 2.5%. It will also get $6.5 billion in preferred shares that pay a 9% return. And it will get a $2.5 billion note and a seat on GM's board of directors. As part of a tentative deal with the UAW, General Motors plans to take five Delphi plants back. According to the Free Press, the plants would operate under Delphi union rules, but would be considered part of GM. GM's taken back a steering, a thermal systems, and electronics and safety, and two powertrain facilities. Delphi has been trying to emerge from bankruptcy since 2005 and has a bankruptcy hearing this Friday regarding changes to that plan. The German government will decide today which bidder it prefers Opel to partner up with. According to Reuters, the government's considering bids from Fiat, Magna, RHJ International, and a Chinese company, Beijing Auto, that just emerged as a late bidder. GM will make the final decision, but German aid for Opel hinges on who GM picks. There's a proposal to give 1.5 billion euros, or about $2 billion in aid, but it depends on the investor's proposal whether or not Opel can be separated from GM, which is what the German government prefers. Reuters reports that yesterday, three Chinese companies announced they were merging to form a giant auto parts supplier. The new organization would have a target sales level of 100 billion yuan, or about $15 billion, by 2012. Recently, China has been encouraging its steel and automotive industries to consolidate so they can better compete with foreign companies and this will make that one of the largest suppliers in the world. Yesterday, Taiwan announced that it launched the New Electric Car Research Consortium. Gasgu reports that the organization aims to leverage the country's IT industry to capture a 3% share of the global electric vehicle market. Hey, who would have guessed it would ever become so popular when it was introduced three decades ago? Soon, the little tyke's cozy coupe will take its place in automotive history. The newsleader.com reports on June 6th, the red and yellow toy car is being inducted into the Crawford Auto and Aviation Museum in Cleveland. Over the years, the Cozy Coupe gave countless kids their first experience behind the wheel, while its interior gave new meaning to the term plasticky. Well, here's to another 30 years. And coming up next, it's time for You Said It. Changing tires out here could be dangerous, but with these tires, I don't need to worry. Bridgestone. And now it's time for some of your feedback. This is You Said It, where I get a chance to respond to some of your questions and comments here on the show, and of course I try to answer some of them on our website. Ron Paris wrote in to say, Do you think these electronic fuel economy readouts are any more accurate than they used to be? I'm skeptical. Well, Ron, when you measure the old way of dividing the gallons that you used into the miles that you drove, remember that most odometers are not perfectly accurate. And how much gas did you really use? That can be difficult to measure accurately, too. So I think the electronic readouts are reasonably reliable. Duke T wrote in to say, could you enlighten us as to the corporate structure that will be adhered to under the new cafe regs? Will it be necessary to be under one corporate roof 
such as the GM divisions, Chevy, Cadillac, Buick, GMC, or will it be allowed to be based on ownership of stock, as in VW, Audi, Porsche? Well, Duke, it's done by the corporate group. So all of GM's divisions are averaged together. Same goes for VW, Audi, Bentley, and Lamborghini. They all get lumped together too. And then Frank wrote in to say, what kind of shape are the rest of the European car companies in? We've all heard a lot about GM, Chrysler, Toyota, Honda, Ford, but what about BMW, Mercedes, VW, and Fiat? Well, Frank, so far this year, all the major automakers are losing money, except for Volkswagen. In fact, it's interesting, in the first quarter, Toyota lost more money than General Motors, and Honda lost more money than Ford. Well, that's it for today's top news in the global automotive industry, but don't forget to tune in for AutoLine After Hours tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern. Joining us for that show is Chubba Chetta, the former editor of Car and Driver Magazine. Thanks for watching, we'll see you tomorrow. Visit our website for even more great content all week long. AutoLine Extra, Don's Journal, Podcasts, and even more. So click over and get the inside view at AutoLineDetroit.tv.